Hey you guys, how's it going? So this is a 45 plus 45 game against Nimbus 30. Um, I'm just going to play some normal chess, okay? It's too warm to wear the glasses of intelligence. So I've had a fascinating question from Mario. <sighs> um, saying basically, so Mario saying he's around 1000. Um, how do you improve your calculation? And how many moves should you be calculating um, around 1,000? And then how do you get to 2,000? Now, I'll tell you how to get to 2,000 when I figure it out. Okay, so that's what we're going to use as our topic for this game, okay? Calculation. So I think, and it kind of sounds a bit flippant, but the, um, I think the best answer I can give that's most accurate is actually that it's not how much how far you should be calculating if you're a 1000 or if you're a 600 or a 1400 or an 1800 it's the depth at which you choose to calculate will play a major factor in your rating it's the other way around right so like if you want to stay at 1000 then you can calculate if this, then that, how does that look, kind of thing, right? Um, so, there, I mean, there are levels. I mean, the first level is, is this a blunder? Like, you know, knight takes e5. Oh no, right? That, and that's calculation, right? If I do this, what's my opponent gonna, well, he's gonna take my knight. And then I lose a piece and that's bad, right? So, if this, what happens, good or bad? And that's like your heuristics. You, heuristics mean they are your rules of thumb that you use to say is this a good thing or a bad thing okay so and then from there you can go if i do this what are my opponent's options okay if he takes option a what can i do etc etc so i'm like 1550 right now my highest is 1660 something um and so i'm currently performing at 1550 level let's try and see what the difference is there okay so I'm already starting to think about candidate moves. My heuristics early on, in, look, clearly I can't calculate every possible eventuality, right? Every possible move. So I'm already, I will start with um, basic ideas like development. I know I'm in the opening. I know that it makes sense to develop my pieces. I know it makes sense to get my king castled, okay? So I would narrow it down pretty much to maybe a pawn move in the center. Now, d4 is a move. They may take, I could take with a queen, I could target g7. Um, however, and, and the other thing about this move is it releases this bishop. Now where does my bishop want to go? Would it want to go here? Possibly. Or shall I just develop a knight and control the center? Nothing wrong with that. Or should I develop this bishop to, for example, c4 and target the f7 square, nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna go with the bishop move because there are two pluses to that move. I'm controlling one extra square in the center, this square, right? Now, if I'd moved my knight out here, I would have controlled two squares in the center. Um, I would have defended this pawn, for example, which, would, which is a good thing. And I have, I'd have three pieces controlling that square. Okay, um, but this, does a couple of things. Okay, so we control one square in the center. We target f7, which is a weakness because it's defended only by the king, right? Uh, and the other thing is that it prepares for kingside castling, should I choose to do it. So next thing is, you, the first thing you should always do is look at your opponent's previous move. Uh, what did my opponent do there? Well, what my opponent is doing there, this is a prophylactic move He's trying to avoid knight to g5, and then either knight or bishop takes on f7. Right, that was not actually my immediate intention, because there is a principle that you don't move developed pieces more than once in the opening, unless you've got a very good reason to do so. Now, from here, let's say my opponent has just played something like this. Would I have played my knight in there, looking for a cheap shot? I don't know. I think they still have d5 there. They could even have played something like this, I don't know. 
But I'm, I'm trying to play principled. So immediately I'm thinking d3. Why? Because I know I need to get my bishop out at some point. I know I need to get my knight out. Now knight c3 I know is not a mistake at this point. And I'm controlling these two squares in the center. I'm defending this pawn, which is currently not defended. So nothing wrong at all with that move. Okay. Nothing wrong with this move. Now look, one, two, three pieces developed into the board. My opponent has had three turns. He's moved three pawns. So now let's look at something else. How many squares in my opponent's half of the board do I control? One, two, three. So that's one with the knight, with the pawn. Bishop controls these two. Knight also controls them. Okay, and currently that's it. Right, how many squares in my side does my opponent control? It was two. Oh, three, four with this bishop. That was it. Okay. So knight f6, good move. But this, this I think is already a slight weakness, but that's from experience, okay? So now the first thing I'm thinking is, is d3. Is d3 immediately playable? Probably is. Is there a threat from this move? Well, he's attacking that pawn and it is defended. If I push d3, it's then defended twice. No bad thing. I don't think I need to castle yet. So there is a general rule that was in the Chernev book. Um, castle because you must or you want to, not simply because you can. Can't remember who said it. It's an old chess writer. But that kind of applies to many situations. Okay, so now I've moved two pawns. And the key thing is that I've allowed both bishops to come out into the game. Right? Now my dark square bishop can't go here or here or here because those squares are all controlled by pawns. It may want to come to e3 or it may just sit where it is. It may come to d2, right? But three perfectly good squares. And a bishop does not have to fly out into the board all the time. A bishop, for example, this bishop could win the game effectively by capturing that pawn later on. And that can be its first move of the game. But I think it was Naroditsky said that you can, you, you can consider a, a bishop to be developed even if it hasn't moved. If it has sight of something useful, then it can stay right where it is and, um, and still play a very important role in the game. So, <clears throat> however, if I want to castle queenside, that bishop would have to move. Right now, I can't see any reason why I would need to castle queenside. When I can castle kingside, get my rook into the center and press on towards my opponent's position. Okay, we have knight c6. All right, so am I concerned about this? If there, I mean, I don't have to take. This is another key thing. I don't automatically capture, don't automatically recapture, don't automatically give check, don't automatically do anything. The first thing that you should always do in chess is nothing at all. Okay, so knight d4 is not a concern. Now, if I develop my bishop to e3, say, and knight d4, I, w I can win a pawn. Because knight comes here, I take the knight, pawn recaptures, bishop captures, say. So let's just do that. Let's just develop the bishop, right? This is all fairly quiet so far. My opponent is not um, actively contesting the center of the board. So ideas about queen d2, queen e2, then I've got options to castle either side. And already after six moves, I've moved the two pawns, which is the minimum you have to move to release your bishops, and I've released all four minor pieces. So as far as opening principle goes, a star so far. And I don't need to, I don't need to be attacking yet. Your prime objective in the opening is to develop your stuff. Stuff developed, right? Get the king castle to safety, if appropriate, which it usually is. And I, I'm thinking queen d2, because I'm already eyeing up this h3 pawn, h6 pawn. I don't think this was a necessary move, and I think it's now created a target for me later on. So if my opponent, for example, okay, it's gonna say if he puts his bishop here and castles, 
I would definitely be thinking about some kind of bishop sack on there. All right. <coughs> now, my opponent has played a decent move. He's developed a piece. He's attacking the knight. The knight is also pinned because I can't. If I move it, I lose my queen, which we do not want, do we, precious? Now, so one thought is get out of the pin. Queen d2. But what if the bishop takes my knight? Well, I recapture with a g pawn, and I open up the g file. And I've moved pawns towards the centre. So now, instead of this guy being here, he's now here. And then I can push forward and challenge the e pawn with a spare f pawn. So I'm not concerned about this, right? But before I do this, what can my opponent do? Well, he could come in, he could come in here. Blah de blah de blah. We've had that conversation. I just take him because the pin's gone. Another option is to kick the bishop. But I think let's get the queen off the back rank. Okay. There's a few advantages to this. It means that now my king can castle either side. Right? My queen is also now backing up this, this bishop on this diagonal, which might be useful. Okay, he's taken. I recapture with a g-pawn, like we said. Okay, and now probably I will castle long. If I castle. However, one thing I notice is that I now have some extra pawn poundage around the 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 middle of the board so it may be that sticking my king on e2 is actually the safest place for my king i'm open to that possibility the better you get at chess the more open you are to weird things it's almost like you have to you have to learn the principles and then unlearn them or learn them and then figure out how and when to break them now i'm not a fan of this Um, so he's just broken a principle, right? He's moved his knight here and he's moved his knight here. So he's moved a developed piece twice. On here, the knight was controlling two squares in the center. From here, it's now only controlling one square in the center, the, the center being these four squares, by the way. Now, I could kick him away. And then he'll go back here. And what has been gained? I mean, the point is, what's he trying to do? What's the idea, mate? So one idea, for example, for me, I mean, look, let's just answer that question. I don't know. I don't know what his game is. Does he want to prompt me, provoke me into A3 and kick him back? I don't know. But one thing I do notice is he's now put his knight. Another problem is here it was defended by a pawn. Here it ain't defended at all. So he's just gone behind enemy lines and has he... A really good reason to do so I'm not sure so one idea is to play my knight to here and then I've got discovered attack by the Queen and that would probably force the knight back anyway if I think about it knight here he can't go there 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 no he can't he's got to retreat either to a very bad square or to where he just came from and have I improved my knight by doing that that's the next question well I don't know but one thing I do know is that we then have two attackers on this square, do we not? My knight goes to b5, my bishop is looking at that square, and my knight is looking at that square. So if I play this, he retreats, oh, then his knight's defending that square. Aha! So, maybe not ideal. Now, what else have we got? So I'm not worried about this. So what I'm going to do, just drink in my coffee. Drinking my coffee. Um, F4 is a thought. I mean, I could even castle. I could castle here. He can't take this because it's defended two times. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's castle. So now my king is safe ish. His king ain't. Therefore, the general principle is when your opponent's king is, not, is still in the middle of the board, you want to bust open the center. Also, black is underdeveloped. Why? Because he's messed around with an unnecessary pawn move and an unnecessary second knight move of a developed piece. Um, he's built himself a dark square pawn chain and now his bishop is stuck behind it. So he's going to have to play this move. And then his queen is very much hampered as well. Uh, 
My bishop's still looking at f7. We like this very much. Can always drop my bishop out there if I need. But I'm definitely thinking about f4, right? I have now completed development. Congratulations, move nine. We've completed development. The only reason why I didn't do it in eight moves, which is the quickest possible way, is because I spent a move recapturing on f3. And that's all good. Because, oh dear. Here we go, another pawn move. Now, what's wrong with this? The first thing I notice is that knight was about to go to there, was it not? Okay, now he stopped my knight from going here, but if I kick the knight now, I think the only square it's got is a6. Then it might come back here to c5 at some point. But that's kind of okay. The question is then, right, then we have to go back to our heuristics, okay? So this is one bit about calculation. Yes, I can go there. Where, hey, look, I've been aggressive. I've hit the knight, right? But is there's a big difference, like in boxing, between a jab that's blocked and a jab that makes contact, right? Is this the former or the latter? If I play a3 and the knight goes back here, I'm not going to take with a bishop, right? I'm not going to give up my perfectly good bishop, which, by the way, has got eyes on f7, which is a good thing. For his stupid knight, yes, it doubles and isolates his pawns on the a file, but then here comes the rook, now looking down at where my king is. I don't need to do that, right? However, I could still do this because he might have ideas about pushing here. Right, so if I was to do a3, and he dives back, and I could then drop my bishop into a2, in, in case that he's planning to push d5. Right, so we do this, he goes here, I come here, he pushes this, and this is 1500 level thinking, I, I'm not even sure it is, you know. Um, I can take the pawn, then what happens? He takes with the c-pawn. Don't really like any of that. I would like to avoid this push, if at all possible. <clears throat> now, so I've got one, two, three attackers on that square. However, a3 would remove a defender from that square. So he's got, how many pieces he, he got looking at? One, two, three, four. That's the issue. So then where, where my brain is gonna go is, well, can I push at f4 now? and try and head him off at the pass. If I push f4 and he does this, can I take, let him take my bishop, then I take his knight, right? And then look, I've still got one, two central pawns. He has none because this pawn here, this guy, right, has come here and then here, and I have the center and I have a central rook. So I'm going to push f4, that makes sense. Right, I, I think this is still probably his best move, probably. But he's a 1052. I don't think he's going to do that. If he does it, oh, 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 now this is unexpected. Okay, now I can drop back. And if he pushes again, I have time to do this. Now, First thing to do is nothing. What if I just take here? And let him take my bishop, and I take his knight. I don't like the fact that he's opening up the b-file. That, that gives me, you know, slight heebie-jeebies. Um, sacking the bishop on f7 is also an idea. This is a move that I think about more these days. This is a move that I, comforts me when I, when I go to sleep. I love this move. I love it with all my heart. It's the best move in chess. Bishop takes f7, check. That will probably force his king to move. But then you have to say, well, is that really a body blow? You know, is there any follow-up to this? Um, I could just calmly drop back. If I calmly drop back, what's he going to do? Well, maybe you push a pawn. Then I do this, kick his knight. No reason not to do that. And there comes a point where you go... That's good enough, as far as I'm capable of seeing. Capable of seeing and can be bothered to dig as well. 
Um, yeah, dropping back. I, I've, I, I'm getting this feeling like he's overextending here. And yes, my king is on that side. But guess what? My king doesn't even have to stay on that side. Right? My king can run away. My king can run away. All kinds of places. He does this. I don't know. I kick knight. Bishop can hide on a2. Perfectly valid square for a bishop. All right? The old a3, bishop back there, or, or same on this side, or same for, for black. And still I'm targeting f7. This is the important thing. This is a 115 game for me. I get one precious rating point if I should defeat Nimbus 30. Which sounds like an antique broom, doesn't it? All right, now, this move. What's the threat? Is there a threat? There is a threat, okay? Pawn forward, defended by another pawn, attacking two pieces. It's a pawn fork. I'm not really even gonna to think too much. I'm gonna capture. Now, he might take with a knight. This is fine. If, if so, I take this. Why? Because I wanna split up these pawns. Okay, he's taken with the pawn. And now, my bishop is perfectly happy. My bishop doesn't have a care in the world. I've got two attackers on here, right? He's got two defenders, yes. That's fine. But, you know what else I like? I like the fact now that from here, what he's done is given me an opportunity to move my e-pawn and eliminate it from the board. But, Hunty, you say, right? This is a central pawn. It has control over central squares. This is surely a good pawn. Yes, it is. But guess what? It's also in the way of this guy, right? The key thing in this position, this is like then getting into positional thinking. The key thing, the critical factor is, black is on move 12, right, or here on move 11, hasn't castled. Hasn't finished developing his minor pieces even, right? Hasn't got his queen off the back rank. So he's one, two, three moves away from completing development. His king is still out in the open. His king is still central. Therefore, anything I can do to open up the e-file, happy days. So takesy, takesy, and now look what I have. Also, a hanging pawn, right? Because when you move this pawn forward, this pawn was the only defender of this guy. And now it ain't, because it's dead, right? So I can take that pawn if I wish. I've got two attacks on here. But first I think I'll take the pawn. Guess why? Because, okay, in fact, this pawn is defended three times. Yeah, so I'm gonna take the pawn anyway. It's free stuff. And if the, the knight will move away, okay? The knight will move away and it could come here, it's fine. And look, just look at Black's position. Can you just get a feel for this position? Let me just flip the board. Black's position, king, with lines, you know, open lines around him. In fact, just after flipping the board, I see this pawn hangs as well. I didn't even see that from my side. All right? So, and look at his pawns. Fractured, divided, leaderless. Ah. Okay. So, he's gone ahead with that attack anyway which is fine. I didn't even think about that, didn't calculate it, didn't need, really need to, because I've got an attack. Okay, so I take him. Whichever one of these he takes, queen recaptures, yeah? And if it's the bishop, comes a check too. And he's got to recapture now, otherwise he, he simply gives up a mind. Well, to be fair, actually, this is another thing. He still has that capture. Right, unless, if he does something else, like queen takes pawn, Say, for example, if on the next move I can do something that, for, that um, <clears throat> increases the threat, right? Just pause. Oh, sorry, decorator came to the door now. Okay, so he's gone ahead, he's taken the knight. That means I can simply recapture with my queen, okay? So, nothing really to think about there. Uh, he can't take there because I can take. Now, I'm attacking the knight. I'm also on this diagonal now, which is interesting. So if his queen takes here, I've got a strong mind to trade queens. 
I'm actually up two pawns at this time. Okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. All right. First thing to do, don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Menering. All right. Yes, my queen is under attack. Okay. First thing to do, nothing at all. Do not stress, do not react ever. Okay, my queen is under attack now. So first thing I'll do is I'll go, well, can I capture the attacker? Yes, I can, right? You don't have to run away, I can capture this knight. Then queen recaptures and then I take a pawn here. Then bishop recaptures, but it can't because queen takes bishop, right? And you see those things when you don't freak out. So I could just take the knight. Another thought is, queen c6 check, can I give check? Can I up the ante? Can I increase the danger levels? And by giving check here, I'm also adding two attackers to this knight. So let's think that through. Queen c6 check. All right, if the queen blocks the check, I'd grab the rook. Queen c6 check. Um, he has to get out of check. And actually, the king can't move. The king cannot move. He can't go there because he's still in check by the queen. Can't go there because he's in check by the pawn. So queen here, check. I'm targeting the king, the rook, the knight, everything. I think queen has to block. Queen blocks. I give check again. King can't go here because the queen's in the way. Can't go here because the pawn's in the way. Queen must come back. Sold. And that's as far as I need to go. Right? This is a forced sequence. He can't take me. There's actually only one legal move that I can see. Unless I've done something stupid. King can't move. Right? And he's in check. Can he capture the attacker? No. He can't do anything else other than if, if, unless it gets him out of check. So the only way is to block the check with this. And then I do this. And then his only legal move is queen back. Then I can trade queens and then I win the knight and the game. And did I see all that? Um, at this point? Right, when he did this? No, I didn't see it at all. I didn't see it at all, but I knew I had a threat. I knew he had two threats. I knew those threats were kind of covered. So I took. He took, blah. And he, he didn't think this moved through very well because he, we didn't ask the question, if I do that, because the thing is, right, here, this knight doesn't have to move. It does not have to move. It's defended by the bishop. This knight is in a very good position where it is. It's right in my face. 100% in my face. He could follow up, for example, with rook c8. You know, putting some pressure on. What he's done here is seriously blinked. This is one of those totally ineffective pointless attacks. It's like, I'm attacking your queen, aren't I clever, right? I'm attacking your bishop. But then, all I have to do, and he didn't ask the question, what is my opponent's best move if I do this? And if he had, he might have found this. Attacking literally everything. So, what do we do? Nothing at all. This is my default, okay? I already have that. No one's taken that away from you, right? Now, I could, I could win the knight very easily. I take queen, king must take, only legal move. I win the knight, so that wins a piece. I think this wins two. There, king can't go there, there, there. No, it's the only legal move, 100%. Queen must go back, we trade queens, king has to take, I get the, the knight, and I'm gonna be up 10 points of material. Okay, and resigns. So, interesting stuff. So now the question is, why did my opponent lose that game? I'm not going to run the game review. So Philidor defense. Okay, it's quiet. It's, um, it's conservative. The problem with the Philidor, the immediate problem is this bishop. It's like in the French defense, you know, um, where you have your pawns here and here as black. Then this bishop becomes a problem because it's stuck behind your own light squared pawn chain. Okay, this is the opposite problem. Now, um, 
So he's, he's already got an issue. He's going to have to get his bishop out here at some point, right? Which isn't the end of the world, you know. It covers these squares, preventing my knight from coming in. And arguably, does a better job of that than pushing h6. Okay, I bring out my bishop targeting the f7 square, right? This proves to be useful. Now h6. Now, I think bishop here would have been better. A better way to stop the knight than moving a pawn. Why? Because you're in the opening. You want to develop pieces. So develop. Develop a piece and do this job. This is what he wants to do. Don't send a boy to do a man's job. Right? Particularly if you've got any intention of castling your king to the king side, right? Leave these the hell alone. And this has got a really good reason to do it. And right here, you don't, because I think that would have been better. Okay? So this is already a weakness. I develop. He develops. Now I push d3. The big difference being, look, I've got my light squared bishop outside of my light squared pawn chain. Develops. Develop my other bishop. Develops a bishop. Am I worried? Nah, I'm not worried. It's a queen here. And now he blinks, right? This is a very common thing. There's no reason for him to take there. Right? If I'd have castled my king, my rook would be on d1, and this would again be another pin, because he's attacking a higher value piece. And he doesn't have to move this bishop. This bishop can stay there. There's no real benefit to him capturing that knight whatsoever. Okay? when he hasn't completed development, when he hasn't got his queen off the background, when he hasn't got his king safe. These should be his priorities. So he takes the knight, he blinks. It's like, too much tension, I can't handle it. Right? I recapture. Happy days. Knight comes in. What's that about? Right? You're sending one lone horse, one lone rider against your enemy's army. Just castle. Right? I'm doing what I set out to do um, in, the, in the opening. He pushes a pawn. He's got ideas now of attacking, you know, with this cannon fodder, guys. I break, because I've completed development and I'm allowed to make pawn breaks now, right? What kind of pawn break do I want to do? I want to open up the centre. Why? Because my opponent hasn't castled. Attacky. Not bothered. Takes, 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 hit the knight. Attack. Meh. Right? Takes, takes, takes. And then it's, it's literally just all over. And the reason is because he never finished development. Right? That's one big reason. Okay? So he's, he's lacked control over the board. He's not finished development. He's, he's spent too many moves shifting pawns. Far too many moves shifting pawns. In fact, so that was a 17-move game. Let's count the, the pawn moves from... Uh, black, right? One, two, three. Piece, 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 piece. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, eight pawn moves he made in that game. What about from white? One, two, three to recapture. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I made seven in that. But look at the difference here. So the other, the other big difference is, <coughs> right, the, the, some of the pawn moves that I've made have been, you know, my key pawns, right? Um, my most active pawns, right? So I've used some pawns for that. Look, but I've still got these four nice and tight around where my king is, okay? These other guys are suicide pawns. This is fine. Um, but the other key factor is, this bishop never moved. This queen never moved. Until until this point in the game, right? So he, 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 he just he missed the opening the basic stuff. He missed the opening principles. Um, and he's moved the same piece multiple times. And as a result, he didn't do these. So simple stuff really. <coughs> but yeah, Mario, hope that's been useful for you, mate. Um to give a, a bit of an insight into into calculation but like I say you know the short version is it's not so much what how deep should I be calculating at my level it's like calculate deeper if you want to get better simple as I you know I know I need to calculate more I know that I'm too lazy that I'm being lazy I'm not lazy I just choose I, cho I choose to give up at a certain point, 
and stop thinking it through. And you you saw it once or twice in that game. I went, yeah, that'll do. That's fine. Yeah. Um, you don't have to give up. Nobody's making you stop calculating at a certain point. Unless you're on a short time control, in which case, stop it. Right? Play longer time controls. Simple stuff. Right. So, hope that's useful for everyone. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.